This is our orange jazz and pastel albino eclipse. What an albino eclipse is, it's an albino of the call line. The eclipse is the leopard with motley. So it's two copies of leopard, one copy of motley. You get a pattern with snake and that pink that's in there is, I really believe it's that orange jasm that's in there, that pastel line. Because, uh, and this is also 100% head blood. Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. We're back again. I hope you enjoyed this past weekend's tour I gave of uh, underground reptiles. I had a real fun time there. And of course, as you can see, I loved holding that albino alligator. It doesn't get much better than that. That, that. that might be one of the highlights of all the animals I've encountered over the years. Obviously getting my albino water monitors was really cool, but man, to hold that albino alligator, oof. That's pretty cool. Not many people can say they did that. So thank you guys over at Underground. Today we're gonna to be looking at a boa litta from this past year. You know, I love I love leopard, albino, motley stuff, which is also known as albino eclipse. I have um, incorporated or at least gotten the blood gene, at least in one copy, into that project. And I wanna show you how those snakes are progressing. Plus we'll look at some monitors and some other stuff in the collection that I really like. This week, hopefully, we'll be uh, getting some more cool breeding action from the boas and the ball pythons as the season progresses. It's been raining here tremendously. Oh, look what we have. We have a little peacock coming over. He wants to uh, partake in the video. What's up, guys? Oh, there's the whole crew. There's the crew. There's the crony crew, I call it. <laughs> the the marjoran crew of uh, peacocks. We've got the white pied who's my uh, daughter's best friend, and then we got his uh, two little compatriots there. All right, well, let's go into the snake room. Let's see what we got today, and uh, let's have some fun. Look at my rhino rat snake. This uh, little boy is about, he's a, I guess he's going on three years old now. He's, he's gotten big. First time I've seen him really stretched out in his cage. There's that little horn we love so much. We're growing his his, uh, his girlfriend up little by little. She's still a little too young for him. It'll be another year or so. But at some point, we'll get to breed these guys, which is exciting. And he loves his um, his naturalistic enclosure. He climbs and he he really does enjoy. You know, they're they're you got to really you know take your time with these guys. He was tiny for a long time. I had to have him in a hatchling rack because he would have escaped. Now he's at a cool stage where you can kind of take him out and he's, he's, he's got some size on him and, you know, interact with him a little bit. Yeah, he's pretty, he's really pretty tame. My son holds him up. I don't know if he's gonna let me grab him in his cage, but if I pull him out, he'll come out. Yeah, I'll just leave him alone for now. He's having a good time. Beautiful snake though. One of my favorites in the collection. Just so cool looking. Look who it is, it's Kofu. I just had him out before actually. I put on the gloves. He, he actually likes the gloves because he can dig his claws into the gloves and then he knows it doesn't hurt me. And then I put him back. Of course, as soon as I get the camera out, he's in a bad mood. I, I just don't think he likes the camera in his face to be honest with you, but you know, then again, who would? He's gotten big though, I just want to show you how big he got. He is huge. <laughs> he's, he's, he's getting some girth on him. You know, look at that. Those pecs he's got. He's got pecs, he's got quads. <laughs> he's got some good neck muscles too. And that tail is pretty good, pretty muscular too. He's, uh, he's ready. We need you bigger though, Kofu, if you're gonna go with, uh, with our black beauty girl up there, our black dragon. Because she's bigger than you right now. So you gotta put a little more size on. Hopefully by the spring you'll be breeding with her. That's our goal. Um, <laughs> I don't know, you guys saw my al the albino alligator. I saw it on underground the other day. He's, he's not as cool, but he's 
pretty cool. He's pretty close. I'll take him. He's much more handleable than the albino alligator. And he's he's probably smarter than the albino alligator, that's for sure. Maybe not as much fun, but definitely less dangerous. <laughs> he's gonna get way less bigger, that's for sure. All right, Kalfu, go hang out in your water bowl. All right, we had a little boa action, a little breeding action there. This is our onyx female. It's head for blood and head for Honduran T positive. Being bred by our hypo, super onyx, het blood. So we can produce some really nice stuff with these guys. We can produce super onyx, hypo super onyx stuff. We can produce hypo super onyx bloods. Actually, the male is possible het Honduran T positive as well, so we could even get that snuck in there as well. So a lot of good, this is a lot of good super dwarf action here. I don't want to disturb these guys because they could be locked. It looks like they're close here. And I don't want to, I don't want to scare them. So we'll just leave them. They're having fun though. Look at that, look at that cute. That is a really, really nice breeding lock right there. This is another Onyx Het Blood, Het Honduran T positive being bred by a Honduran T positive sun glow. So this is uh, Onyx. So this, this male is hypo, Honduran T positive. So it's a Honduran T positive sun glow. And he's also Onyx. And he's got a lock on her. So we're going to have a good percent. 50% of the babies will be Honduran T positive visuals, which is great. 50% of them will be hypos. We could hit some super Onyxes for sure. And this male is also possible to have blood, so we could get some blood even in there. She's had blood, 100%. He's got, it hasn't been proven out yet. He's got some great color. That Honduran T positive sun glow is just, you know, with the onyx is beautiful. I mean, you can just see his colors. They're both really glowing, really nice here. Um, I don't want to bother them too much, but that's a nice, nice lock. All right, here's one of my uh, hypo granite Burmese pythons males that I have. I don't, I don't usually, I usually show my bigger ones. These males are, I keep them up on the smallest side. <laughs> Look at that, no one's striking for me. The granites are a little more high strung and I really don't handle this guy that much. Um, so he's not in a good mood. But they're very pretty. I, I, matter of fact, of anything, any morph combination that's not albino, I think this is the nicest combination of hypo granites. And I was, I had a breeding pair of these, which is the parents of this one. And, um, I made a lot of really nice hypogranites. Obviously, when the band came in here in Florida and I had to pick a bunch to keep, this was one of the ones I decided just because I liked the combination. He'll, he'll calm down. I have, I have to work with him a little bit. You know, he's he's not too bad. He was he was a little nasty when I first got him. When I mean, he first produced him, uh, he's he's calmed down significantly. And, and you know, these berms like to blow air. That's like their big thing. And then they calm down quite a bit. So we'll leave him alone. He's a little agitated. Look at that beauty. What a beautiful, what a beautiful Burmese python. Look at that. No albino in there. Just absolutely pretty. All right, we're going to be moving this boy in with a female. I don't know if he's ready yet, but he, he's definitely old enough. He's a 2021. This is an, an Incan on a Costa Rican tea positive het leopard. 66% at leopard. I think he's going to prove out, but he is gorgeous. So Costa Rican T positive is a really nice line of uh, T positive. And we know we love Inca. Inca is just a busy pattern. So, I mean, look at that. that that's all Inca right there. Just really dark. There's a lot of dark and, and busy pattern in there. Oh, it's all lightened up. The good thing is that the, the Costa Rican T positive made the lights lighter, but it kind of kept the darks dark. Almost like a desert ghost gene does in ball pythons. It didn't lighten up all this, too. I mean, I, I mean to a certain degree, it did. It, it, it's usually black. Now it's like a dark brown. But we're going to take him and we're going to put him with our double head Costa Rican T positive uh, and head leopard female. And I would love to get some Inca Costa Rican T positive leopards this year. That would be exquisite. All right, it's a little update day here on Monday. This is our orange jasmine pastel albino 
eclipse. What an albino eclipse is, it's an albino of the call line. The eclipse is the leopard with motley. So it's two copies of leopard, one copy of motley. You get a pattern with snake and that pink that's in there is, I really believe it's that orange jasmine that's in there, that pastel line. Because uh, And this is also 100% head blood, which I don't think it's offering any red, the, the head blood, but you never know. So it's a really beautiful, beautiful little boy, which I'm happy it's a boy, so we can get him into the breeding program quicker. And I have a lot of leopard, you know, albino stuff already, but I would like to breed him to something orange jasmine in this in this litter. So if I do breed him to a female, it's gonna take a couple of years to do that, but he's maybe one of the most perfect snakes I've ever produced. This might be the second most perfect snake I've ever produced. This is an orange jasmine line of pastel with albino, call albino, leopard. So it's an albino leopard. There's no motley in here, so we have pattern, which is really cool. And it's also have blood. So this is a girl. So I mean, the ideal breeding would be this girl through the boy I just showed you. She's gonna take a lot longer to get bigger, big enough, but she is also, she's the, the nicest, without a doubt, the nicest albino leopard I've ever produced. She's perfect too. She's got two nice eyes, no eye problems. So we all bred these things. And obviously the head blood part is what really is intriguing. So we can make some, we have a hit on the head blood and produced a blood version of this and a blood version of what I just showed you. I can't even imagine what they would look like. And someday we will, we'll stick with it, I promise. All right. Now, if you like those two snakes you just saw, this is, basically a version of what you just saw without albino. So this is this is only head albino. So this is orange jasmine pastel with leopard in it, head blood, and really beautiful, look at this thing. It's got no hypogene in it. There's no hypo here, and look how red it is, and look how light it is. And that's from that orange jasmine pastel that's in it. Really beautiful. Back off a little bit. Zoom in here. Yeah, that's nice. That little boy came out really nice. I might sell him if anyone's interested. It's a possibility I might let him go. Probably not. <laughs> he is woof. Nice man with the potential. He's double head, blood, and and albino. So can't get wrong. You can't go wrong with that. That's for sure. That is just a nice looking. That's a nice looking snake, you know what? Not every, you know, I love albino stuff, but you know, when you're talking about non-albino, there's so much contrast in here. You have lights and you have darks and you have busy pattern and non-busy pattern. It's, um, there's a lot going on here. An artist who paints would have a field day with this little boy. Trying to paint him and reproduce that. Here's another one I just took out of his tub. This one's nicer than the last one. Also, orange jasmine, pastel, leopard, half blood, head albino. Look at that. This one's lighter than the other one. This one's more red. Because the, remember, orange jasmine pastel is, is, a, is a line bred trait. It's polygenic, meaning that some snakes will express it more, some will express it less. This one obviously is expressing it more than the last one did. And let's see all those, look at those reds just berry colored. I would swear this was hypo leopard, but you can tell it isn't. I mean, look at how dark it is in the faces. But it's got much more red coming through. And once again, hep blood, hep call albina. Can't go wrong with that, man. That is beautiful. Actually, I think it's 66% head albino. Both parents were head. We did hit a lot of albinos for both parents being heads, but if you don't hit the visual, then you, you're not really sure if the babies have it or not. But there's a 66% chance. These guys have really good personalities to these snakes. They're, they're not nippy at all. It's just really chill. So. This was a great litter that I produced this past year. I'm really happy. You know, ball python breeding wasn't such a great year, but man, boas were good. Made some good stuff in the boas, in the boa world. Put him back.
Now for contrast, here's an eclipse I produced. This is a different litter. This is from actually last year, so 22. So it's a year older. This is an eclipse, which is a motley leopard. So you have two copies of leopard, one copy of motley. You get that solid patterned snake. This guy's really light though. He's also het call albino 100%. So usually these guys are a lot darker. This guy happens to be lighter. There's no orange as in this. That's not part of that whole breeding. This is a totally different set of parents, but really nice. This, this one's really trying. This is a, uh, a female. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to list some of these now because they're, they're definitely over a year old. So two years, going on a year and a half here. So this female should be in someone's collection. This is gorgeous. But as you can see, what I just produced this past year, I'm probably gonna wanna keep in those. And so I'll probably let this litter that I've been holding back for quite a while. I've been holding back this litter because I liked it and I wanted to see what I was gonna produce this year. Now this one is, is, is basically the same as that. This is a male, but this is a het. So this is motley het leopard. So you get a striped animal instead of a solid patterned animal. When you have two copies of leopard, that's one copy of, of the leopard gene and also head albino. So pretty cool, huh? Motley really interacts nicely with leopard. It interacts nicely with onyx too. So here's a nice, here's, you can't breed these together because they're both motleys, but these are two really nice babies. Here's, here's what you can breed. If you want to breed, get, grab this male and from that litter. That's a, that's a call albino that's 100% head for leopard. No motley in here at all. So he's, he's a really, really nice albino. He's got some nice size on him. He's from that 22 litter as well. So yeah. I'd breed him to, I'd breed him to, to the Eclipse girl. Produce albino eclipses all day long with these guys. Really beautiful. There he is. All right. You guys like black snakes? We got a black snake for you. We got an IMG Motley, which we know are black right off the bat. Add another gene into that that makes it dark. This is het black gene. Black gene is allelic to leopard and onyx. So it's a dark gene. It's only got one copy of that. So it's het black gene, IMG Motley. Look at that. Look at how black that thing is. Look at this belly on this thing. Unbelievable. Really, really nice looking snake. And he could probably breed this year if I wanted him to. You never know. I gotta figure out who I want to breed him to. That's the whole thing. He's a nice looking, nice looking boy. Look at all that iridescence with the lights hitting it. Because it's so black. You just it's grabbing it and split almost like turning the white light into a rainbow. And really nice. Happy with this boy. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I was having a really good interaction with our albino water monitor, and I, I didn't want to ruin it, so I didn't video it. So then I, then I tried to video him afterwards, and he wasn't in the best mood, but you can see he's getting big. You know, I can't believe how big he's gotten, but those things grow. They, and we don't, we don't give them half as much food as probably a lot of other people do. But they just grew. They're big, they're big monitors, you know, and they're going to get big and they're going to grow no matter what. And so, you know, we try to feed them five days a week, you know, small prey items, quail, mice, and uh, they're putting the size on, that's for sure. Boas are looking great. We got some good locks going on. So we're well into the breeding season. As you can see, we introduced another male to a female. I think maybe I have one more female I might hook up with a male. I haven't decided yet. Um, Still, still thinking about it, but the ball python season is in full bloom, and hopefully this this is going to be a good year for us. If you guys are enjoying these videos, or you got any suggestions, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.